Howdy, who all my stock market gamblers? Welcome today, I'm Tall Mike. So glad you're here. Well, we got the stock market starting to change a little bit, right? Look at the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones has already dropped below its 20, dropped below its 50 day. It's actually a little bit oversold already. Remember, we hit 40,000 on the futures, but we never actually hit 40,000 on the Dow, and we've come way off of that number to an oversold. Now, will they get another push higher trying to get us to that 40,000? I don't think so. I don't think we're going to reach it. We'll see. Maybe we do. But look, at they're starting to break down. The HYG, which is the junk bonds, right? Junk bonds usually lead the market. So you can look at the HYG, which is the junk bonds, and that's breaking down, down below the 20, down below the 50. It's starting to break down. Now, the NASDAQ and the S&P, they're kind of holding up still, right? I mean, they're moving sideways. They haven't really broken down yet. The Russell, which is the small cap stocks, that's starting to break down also. So the downward direction, the downward pull, I think is going to bring the S&P and he's going to bring the NASDAQ down. That's just my take. We'll see how that all plays out. All right, let's get over to some other news here. Now, Jamie Dimon, Jamie Dimon, he came out and he says, well, he's expecting a recession. Well, I expect a recession, too. A lot of people do. That's not really the big news. But the big news was he's expecting the Fed to raise rates up to 8%. 8% interest rates. What would that do to mortgage rates? That'd push them up 10, maybe 12% for mortgages. What would that do to your house prices? It won't be what Dave Ramsey's telling you. It won't be what Barbara Cochran's telling you. They're telling you it's going to the moon. You get mortgage rates up over 10%, you're going to see that whole housing of cards come crumbling down. The housing market is going to come crumbling down. Now, what else will happen if the Fed actually has to raise rates? Well, if they have to raise rates, you're going to see the stock market come tumbling down. But why? Why are you going to see it come tumbling down? Well, you see, there's a problem. In the S&P, S&P 500's got 500 stocks, right? Well, 20% of them are what's known as zombies. Zombies companies, right? So 20% of them do not bring in enough cash flow to even pay the interest on their debt. The only way they stay in business is if they can get new financing, new debt, if they can expand the debt bubble, they need to get new debt. But can they afford 8% rates? And even if they can afford it, will anybody loan them money because they're not bringing in the cash flow? I think that, you know, the recession, what a recession normally does, it flushes out the bad investment, flushes out the malinvestment, if you will. And the malinvestment are the zombie companies. You get 20% of the S&P 500 being flushed out, meaning going out of business, what's going to happen? You're going to have a lot of job losses. What do job losses do? People can't pay their mortgage and they have to dump the house onto the market. But Mike, they could just refinance the house. Have you ever tried to refinance a house when you have no job? Doesn't work. You see, right now, they look at your debt to income ratios, and a lot of people, they're running over 50%. It's getting really hard to even go out and get a HELOC loan. A HELOC loan is a home equity line of credit. Getting really hard to get those loans because the debt to income ratios are too much, right? People can only bring in so much on their job to service their debt and they got to have something left to live on and people don't want to give them any more credit. It's actually any more debt, right? But they call it credit. We are, you, you can't get any more credit. Well, because you're so far in debt. Okay, so they try can't get a HELOC loan. They can't refinance because they lost their job. How they get the money out of the house? The only way to do it is put it on the market. Sell the house. Sell the property. What do house values do then? They start to circle the drain. That's going down, going down, going down. Now, I know the sun is still shining out there. Houses are still selling. These are the good times. You can almost get what Billy Bob got. Not quite. Most areas are down 5 to 10% already. New homes down about 
15 to 20 percent, but the prices are still pretty strong. There's still buyers out there. These buyers are going to be going away. Why? Because people lose their job. Because mortgage rates could hit 10. I'm calling for 10, but Jamie Dimon says we could hit 8 percent on the Fed funds, which would push mortgage rates up to about 12 percent. And that's going to be, it's just not going to be really good for housing. And you can see this all playing out, right? I mean, now you think about that. You think about what he's talking about. He's talking about the Fed not going to cut rates. The Fed's going to raise rates. Now, you see, logic would tell you that that makes sense. But a lot of people are still expecting the Fed to cut rates. Why? Why? But because they want to save the government, right? Government can't afford the interest at these levels. They cannot. They have to print more and more money, which is inflation, which is that's the reason I hit it right on the head right there. Inflation's come roaring back. Inflation is not going this way. It's going this way. Now, why would you want to cut rates? when inflation is going this way. Any rational person would tell you that they're going to raise rates, and Jamie Dimon may be right. Maybe they raise rates up to 8%, trying to kill this inflation monster. I think the monster is just running away, and they're not going to be able to kill it. And inflation, we could hyperinflate. That's just my take. But Jamie Dimon's take is a recession with 8% Fed funds rate. That is going to be very painful in a lot of markets, especially the housing market especially the stock market and what happens to bonds well as rates go up those bonds come down so everything's going to kind of be coming down right now what's happening you can tell this right now right okay all right let, 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 let's talk about let's talk about blackstone for a minute now blackstone what they do? They went out and they bought air communities. Okay, what's air communities? Well, they got these 76 communities, gated communities, luxury apartments, right? Luxury apartments is what they went out and they bought. They bought this for $10 billion in cash, $10 billion they just spent. Okay, so they got all these apartments now, and the average income that rent in these luxury apartments is $237,000. So they're at the high end, right? They're at the high end of the market. Average rent about $2,700 on up, $2,700, $3,500 a month. So they're not renting like any real, real beat up, bombed out places. They're renting the high end, the luxury, and they bought this all, and they're planning to put another $400 million, invest $400 million, and fix them up. So, well, what are they expecting to do? Maybe they're expecting to raise the rates, right? Raise your mortgages, raise your mortgage, now, not mortgage, raise your rent. Anyways, but they're trying to increase the value of the property, putting in 400 million, bought it for 10 billion, put in 400 million, get the rents up, and then maybe try to flip these properties in. Uh, maybe they put them in the form of an IPO or something, right? But they bought these communities, 76 of them. And, but here's the problem. Here's the problem. Okay. Now they bought them because they thought they were cheap, right? Now, why were they cheap? You see, Unlike a house, a house is very emotional, right? Very emotional. That's my house. It's worth more than anyone else's on the block because it's mine. You see, a lot of emotions. A lot of emotions are tied into the home purchases. But when you're talking about apartments, let's say you got a 200-unit apartment complex, right? The emotions are taken away, right? It's basically just how much rent does it bring me and how much can I get on the bonds? See, if you can get more money over here on the bonds right now you can get about five percent but you can get about eight percent what does that do to the apartment it lowers the price of the apartment so even though they've made a what they feel is a good buy it may be a bad buy for them because i don't think rates are going to be coming back down anytime soon i think that jamie diamond could be right and they could be going higher what does this do to those apartments that they just bought to their investment they just invested 10 billion dollars it could drop by a couple billion you know, down to eight billion, down to seven billion. It could drop by more than that if things get really bad. Why? Because people are going to be losing jobs. People are making two hundred and thirty thousand now, but when they lose their job, they're not going to be able to afford those apartments. So some of those apartments are going to be going vacant. So they're not bringing in the rental income. 
more while the Fed funds rate going from five percent to eight percent, that makes those apartments less attractive. So not only are they not bringing in the rents, they're looking less attractive to the investors. So this investment that Blackstone has made may not end up working out so well for them, right? They may lose a lot of money and they're buying at a very interesting time because right now 700 million new units are coming on to the market. That's the wrong number, right? Okay. Anyways, there's a lot of new units, 700,000, 700,000 new units are coming on. These is new construction, new construction in the luxury market, the same thing that they just bought. So you got 700,000 new units coming on, almost a million new units to compete with them. Okay. So I expect the rents of the luxury apartments to be dropping. Number one, people lose their job, can't afford them anymore. Number two, new construction coming onto the marketplace, right? New construction comes on, lowering the rents. The rent values are going to be going down because of supply and demand. More demand, well, supply is going to be going down. But Mike, we got all those newcomers coming across the border. You know, a lot of those newcomers are not making $230,000 a year. Now, yes, they'll give them housing if they can get to California. Governor Newsom will buy them a house. But most of them are not going to be competing for these luxury apartments. So I think these luxury apartment prices of the rentals will be coming down. Now, what does that do? Well, it makes them a regular apartment, right? So the regular apartment, would you rather live in a luxury apartment for the same cost as a regular apartment, or would you rather live in the regular apartment? Everybody would say, well, I'll take the luxury apartment. Correct, you win again. You get So people will be renting the luxury apartment, so what does the regular apartment's gotta do? Well, they gotta start dropping the rates there. You see, this will be the top down pushing the other apartments down till you get to the lower end, which will push that down. Now, granted, on the lower end, we have the newcomers coming in, so they're going to be trying to push those apartments up, so maybe everything gets squished in the middle. This is just an interesting take on the apartment situation. Too many luxury apartments are being built, and Blackstone just went in with a $10 billion investment that I don't think is really going to play out that well for them. Now, I don't feel sorry for them. You know, they, they, they are in the housing market. A lot of people don't feel sorry for them trying to buy places, fix them up, and increase the rent. That's their game. That's what they do, right? But this might not work out well for them because it's bad timing. Bad timing with that Jamie Dimon saying rates are going to 8%. Bad timing with that recession coming on. Bad timing with the new construction, all the apartments being built. Bad timing, bad timing, bad timing. Okay. All right, so I want to talk before I finish up here a little bit about the gold market. Friday was a fascinating day for the gold market, right? I mean, out of the gate, it went up by $40, and then by the time it closed, it was down by $40. Very volatile. Gold does not usually move $100 in a day. Now, this tells me something, though. What does it tell me? It tells me that the dollar is coming to an end. It's the beginning of the end for the U.S. dollar. See, gold is getting ready to take off. People think that it's already taken off. They think it's already inflated too high. They think it's at a record high up here around the $2,400 level. Well, that's too much, right? You don't want to buy it at a record high. What they don't realize is that's going to be very inexpensive in the coming months and a few years out. Why? Because the dollar is just going down. The beginning of the end is happening. Nobody wants to hold dollars. All these banks, all these central bankers, they don't want them anymore. What do they want to buy? They want gold. That's what they want. They want trading gold. They want to get away from the dollar. We've weaponized that dollar. We've stolen uh, Russia's stuff, right? Because they were in the dollar. Russia got their stuff stolen, right? Well, the other countries are starting to worry. Well, hey, maybe the United States is going to steal my stuff. Let's get rid of these dollars. We don't want the dollar anymore. The beginning of the end for the United States dollar. We're getting closer to that. 
that reset. But what's it done to gold? Gold is getting pushed up. And it's interesting now, seven of the last eight weeks have been an up week. And even last week was an up week. We had that $40 down day on Friday, still closed up for the week. So we're still in an upward momentum. Now, this week will be very interesting. I actually think it's going to pull down some. Why? Because it's overbought, right? Okay, just in the last two months, the last eight weeks, gold has gone up $300, $300. What is it? I don't know. About 15%, let's call it. Okay, so it's gone up 15%. What are you getting on your certificate of deposit in the bank? Four or five percent. When gold's doing fifteen percent every couple months, people are going to be getting out of that. They're going to be discovering gold again. They're going to be discovering silver again. Look at Costco, two hundred million dollars, two hundred million dollars a month they're selling. That's a lot of gold and silver, right? I mean, they weren't even selling any before. Now they're already up to two hundred million dollars a month. Now what this tells me is people are starting to wake up. People are starting to think for themselves. People are starting to see the writing on the wall. The dollar is going down. People losing confidence. It's going to continue to go down. Maybe not against other currencies, but against purchasing power. Anybody can see. Go to the grocery store. Go to the gas station. You can see your purchasing power is gone, right? So people are starting to think, oh, huh. Maybe I better start building my ark. Maybe I better get a little bit of gold. People say that it's already too expensive. I don't think so. I hope it comes back down 2200 That'd be a great price to get in it. I don't know if we're going to get that low. I was hoping for 2000 but I, I don't think that's happened for a long time. I think we're headed the other direction. I think silver, silver was dancing on Friday, up a buck, closed down also, closed down about 30 cents. But silver's having this big run. Gold's having this big run. Costco can't keep it in stock. Go online. You don't believe me? Go look at it. Try to buy some from Costco. Out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. They don't have any, right? Anyways, you're going to see the run on gold. You're going to see the run on silver. Still in this stealth bull market going to the moon. Maybe the moon boys want to get in on this move. They think houses are going to the moon. They think the stock market's going to the moon. I don't agree with that. Gold and silver, very possible. We'll see you on the moon. Give me the thumbs up if you like this stuff. Punch the subscribe button. Get out there, everybody. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye now.